What's up YouTube, Dell here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you a profile for budget and competitive pearly. That's right, you don't really need to add huge amounts of money or investment into this deck because it all got its most expensive cards reprinted in Rarity Collection 2. Now the only thing I can mention right now is from my experience with the four boxes that I've seen open, I know very small margins, uh, we didn't see many pearlies, we actually only saw three out of four boxes, but you should be able to pick these up very cheaply and easy. You can get a, re uh, a core of the reprints, which is basically three cards for £9, and then you can pretty much pick up the rest of the core very cheaply and easily because a lot of people opened up amazing defenders. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. I'm going to take you through this very basic pearly profile, explain to you how the deck operates, why you might want to consider picking it up and how it's now just because it's budget a lot more easily accessible and definitely can cause a lot of issues. So the idea behind Pearly, just in the smallest kind of sense, is to get to an ex Pearly Noir with as many materials as possible. Ideally, that's going to be the ability to draw during your opponent's standby phase multiple cards in order to fill up with hand traps, as well as this being unaffected and the ability to have a quick effect to bounce back cards your opponent controls. And it's not a once per turn, which is absolutely insane. You just want to make sure that it maintains five uh, materials or you use up all of its materials so it then becomes affected and your opponent can't steal it and then use it against you. How does it get there? Well, it only plays two monsters, and yes, I know the mixed rarity is killing me just as much as it is you, uh, but we've ended up with three pearlies. These were only three that I was able to get hold of, but this is your main starter of the entire deck. Now, of course, technically, when you consider your spell cards that also get you access to this, they are technically a good starter for you as well, but the idea behind getting to the pearly specifically is this is what's going to allow you to give you the ability to rank up, which the pearl lily can do as well, but this one also gives you the ability to mill the top three cards in your hand, or technically excavate the top three cards your, uh, your deck and then add an excavated pearly spell or trap. Now because the deck is probably like 50-50 I would say, 50 pearl lily or 50 pearlies, 50% um, pearlies and then of course uh, 50% hand traps, protection from hand traps, you name it, you could whiff more times than not. But the idea is it's not hard once per turn, which is absolutely insane, and then the fact that it just lets you rank up. Now, what, when I say rank up, it means once per turn during your main phase, you can reveal a pearly quick play spell in your hand, especially summon an XYZ monster from your extra deck that mentions that card. By using this card, you control as material. Attach the reveal card to the summon monster. This is treated as an XYZ summon, so that's how you can start cheesing out your lower level um, pearly monsters, mainly like your beauty. And then you ultimately end up ranking up into a noir, so you're basically just upgrading the cute little cat, I would assume, all the way up into a stronger, more um, aggressive boss monster. Then of course we've got two per lily, I think two is more than enough on this one. This one isn't as effective as the pearly itself because it doesn't get that mill effect, but this one does on normal or special let you add a pearly card from your deck to the hand. Except a quick play spell, that is the biggest issue, is it then starts shutting off some of your main cards, but when you're able to activate or search out a card like my friend pearly, you're still in a very good position. It also does have that rank up ability, the same as pearly as well, to reveal a quick play um, spell, sorry, Except a quick play spell, you get to target a pearly quick play spell in your graveyard, special on one XYZ monster from your extra deck that mentions this card as material. By using this card, you control as material, and if you do, attach that spell card to the summon monster, and it's treated as an XYZ. However, you can only use each effect a hard once per turn as it actually mentions pearl lily. So they might have felt that they made a, um, a mistake with the pearly, and then was like, correct it with the pearl lily. So that's it for your monsters, moving on to your spells. So we now have the newly reprinted Pearly Pretty Memory. And again, the best thing about this one is this was a lot easier to see. I saw so many more of these in all of those four boxes, which is why obviously I'm making the prediction on the Pearly itself. But this one, each player gains a thousand life points and then you get to apply the following effect. You discard a card and if you do, special on one level one Pearly monster from your deck. All of the spell cards have that same effect or all of the quick plays have that same effect. A pearly XYZ monster that has this card as material gains the following effect. You get to send one other card you control to the graveyard to target one of your opponent's cards and attach it to it as material, which is absolutely insane because you're basically just going, okay, I'm going to just steal one of my opponent's monsters, um, which is, well, technically cards, which is absolutely annoying. We've then got tr uh, triple pearl lily happy, uh, pearly happy memory. So this one was uh, originally a rare and got a super rare OTS upgrade. So you've got, you know, if you want to make it super shiny, you can do. Again, you get to choose one card on the field and until the end of the next turn, the first time it will be destroyed by card effect, it is not destroyed. And then after choosing a card, you get to apply the following effects. Discard and special, or a pearly, uh, sorry, discard and special, and then a pearly XYZ that has this card as material gains the following effect. It can attack monsters a number of times to beat each battle phase up to number of pearly happy memory attached to it, plus one. 
And then of course you've got the continuous spell, My Friend Pearly, which was also reprinted in Rarity Collection 2. You pay 500 life points, you reveal three Pearly cards from the deck to the hand, except itself, uh, sorry, <laughs> from the deck to the hand, from the deck, and then your opponent randomly picks one for you to add to your hand. You shuffle the rest into the deck. And then if a face-up pearly XYZ monster or monsters you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, even during the damage step, you get to add up to three pearly quick play spells with different names from the graveyard to the hand, which is absolutely insane because it recycles, it searches, it does everything you need to. The only negative is that you're paying 500 life points to activate that search. And then we've got three of the field spells for so the Stray Pearly Street. So this one gives you the ability that your opponent cannot target your pearly monsters you control with card effects the turn they are special summoned, which more times than not, you are going to be special summoned in Noir during your opponent's turn, and then that's why it can't be targeted that turn, which is really kind of not nice and protected. And then once per turn, if a face-up pearly XYZ monster you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, special summon a level 1 pearly monster from the deck or graveyard. Once per turn, during the end phase, you get to target a pearly XYZ on the field, attach one pearly quick play spell from the deck or graveyard to that monster as material. And obviously the idea is that all of the quick plays are either going to give it attack boost, they're going to give the ability to attack multiple times, or in the better ones that we're about to talk about in the form of Delicious Memory and of course Sleeping Memory, will give you an attack boost, or of course will give you the ability to draw a card during your opponent's standby phase. Now both of these have been put to two on the ban list unfortunately, which is why we're now playing two and not three of them, but the cards is, are still incredibly powerful. So this one is choose one monster on the field until the end of the next turn, it cannot be destroyed by battle. And then after applying that effect, you get you can discard it and special on a level one pearly. And then a pearly XYZ that has this card as material gains 300 attack and defense for each material attached to it. The next battle damage or effect damage you take um, this turn will become zero. And then again, discard a card, special summon. And then a pearly XYZ that has this card as material gains the following effect. During your opponent's standby phase, draw one card. Now, the reason that it has those two little bullet points is the idea is you can actually um, choose to activate your pearly monsters, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we get to the extra deck, that have quick effects that let you attach one of your pearly quick plays when you activate it to this card. And it's a when effect, so it happens straight away, uh, which is really kind of important. And then the last pearly card we have is the Pearly Heap. So this one is target a pearly XYZ monster you control, special summon from your extra deck one pearly XYZ with a different rank by using that target as material, but return it to the extra deck during the end phase of the next turn. This is treated as an XYZ summon and transfer its materials to the summon monster. You can banish this card from the graveyard to target up to three pearly monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into deck. You can only activate one pearly Heap per turn. Now the idea is that yes, it might get rid of the card during the next standby phase, but by the time you've been able to do that, you're probably pushing for game once it comes back because you're going to be using a pretty much Towers Noir. You're going to detach material, bounce everything, and then you're either going to use it as fodder for the next turn, or you're going to be able to keep it strong enough that it's going to have delicious memory as material to just attack and finish the game off. Now for the cards that are not pearlies, uh, but your consistency cards in the form of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, triple cross out designator alongside, and I'm just going to show you these now as these are like the anti-hand trap cards we are playing. One cool buy and two talents. Now the best thing about cross out is technically in the mirror match you can hit anything, but in the normal matchups you can also hit stuff like talents, which can be quite important. And when you get into the side deck, you can start using stuff like D Fissure, you can also start using stuff like uh, D Barrier, which is very powerful against this deck, so that's kind of why you want to use that as a target. So for our hand traps and cross out targets, we've got Ash Blossoms, Imperms, Drolls, and Ogres. Now obviously you can adapt this to the local environment. If Valor is more effective for you, go for that one. If Mourner is more played, go for that one. Um, so you've got the ability to adapt and change as you see fit. It really is up to you. So you have that space to play around with. That is what makes Pearly so good, is it's technically low investment in the form of the monsters, but they are relatively consistent as well. Moving on to the extra deck, so we'll start with the non pearlies and work our way up. So we've got the one Lyralisk, the Assembled Nightingale. Now the reason that we play this and we also play, once I find it, the Fuko, is that both of these are really good against Tempires. So the Fuko is unaffected by other card effects, and then once per turn, quick effect, you detach two material from this card. For the rest of this turn, it cannot be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage from attacks involved in it. So you just sit this in defense if you want to. It's unaffected completely. You detach materials. It's still unaffected, and it basically just acts as a wall that your opponent needs to try and get past. Nightingale pretty much has the similar effect, but it also lets you gain 200 attack for each material attached to it, and it gets to attack directly. And then while it has XYZ material, it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to the total number of XYZ materials attached to it. And the reason that's so important is you can attack very easily with the Nightingale, go into a Zeus, clear the board, and off you go. Uh, during either player's turn, you get to detach material from this card, and until the end of this turn, Lyrilus monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, and you take no battle damage, you're basically just paying double ups of these. 
Uh, and then for the other XYZs that are technically not pearlies, we've got the one downward because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be ranking up any of these or your lower level pearlies into a Zeus. Pretty standard on that one. Uh, and then we are playing two links and then we're playing a lot of pearlies. So the two links we've got is the one relinquish anima. You would play SP Little Knight if you have access to it, but because we're not doing that, we are actually playing X Pearly uh, Happiness, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. And the reason that you play Protector of the Agent's Moon is because it tributes a fairy as cost, so it lets you get past a card like Skill Drain. So for those of you unfamiliar with this card, if it's Link Summoned, you get to send a Sanctuary in the Sky or one card that mentions it from the deck to the graveyard. Doubt you're gonna be doing that in this deck. But the effect that is really important is it allows you to do the following. Tribute one Fairy Monster, then target one card your opponent controls. And because it tributes as cost, it lets you get past stuff like Skill Drain, and then you can only, uh, and then you get to destroy that card. You can only use each effect once per turn. So that's why you're gonna be playing this card. Then for the Pearly Monsters, we do play a range of level twos, uh, rank twos to be specific. So you're playing two E Pearly Happiness, so this one at the start of damage set, if it battles, you get to add one pearly card from your deck to the hand. And if it has pearly happy memory as material, you get to halve the attack of one face on monster your opponent controls up to three times per turn. When you activate a pearly quick play spell card, quick effect, you get to attach that card to this uh, attach that card to this card on the field as material. And then you get to return one spell attract your opponent controls to the hand. Now, you probably missed the same part, or well, that part that didn't even exist. It is not a once per turn. So when you have this with the pearly card that lets it have additional attacks, as if it needed something like that. You attack, you add. You attack, you add. It goes round and round and round in circles. Which is why something like having a happy memory attached to happiness is going to be pretty insane. Uh, and then the next ones for the level twos, or the rank twos, keep saying level twos, we are playing two E Pearly Beauty. So these are the ones you're probably going to want to end your defensive board on. So this one you get to target one effect once your opponent controls and it gets effects until the end of this turn. It's a quick effect if it has Pearly Pretty Memory as material, and you can use it up to three times per turn. When you activate a Pearly Quick Play spell card, you get to attach that card to, on the field to this as material, and then you can change the battle position of one monster your opponent controls, which is absolutely insane. Then we've got the one plump. So once per turn, you get to target up to two spells and traps in the graveyard and attach them to this card as material. Now it obviously can use your opponent's graveyard as well. Uh, this is a quick effect if this card has delicious memory as material. And then up to three times per turn, when you activate a pearly quick play spell card, quick effect, you get to attach that card on the field to this as material. And then you can banish one monster on the field into the end phase. Pretty nutty. And the last one, which was obviously wasn't reprinted and was the one that came in a, in a core set, is the E Pearly Noir. Now this is actually like £7.50 to £8 a copy at the moment, so that's probably the most expensive one from the entire extra deck. Uh, Anima is like £10 for an ultra rare, so keep an eye on that. Once per turn, you get to discard one card, target one card your opponent controls, or up to two if this card has Sleepy Memory as material, return that card or cards to the hand. Up to three times per turn, again, when you activate a Pearly Quick Play spell card, you can attach that card to this on the field as material, and then you get to set a Pearly Trap from the deck. To, uh, from the deck. Now, obviously, you're only playing one Pearly Trap in the form of the Yeep, so um, it's not as effective to do that, but a nice little double bounce is always going to be important. And then you've got the adult versions of all of these. So you've got the X Pearly uh, Happiness. So you can also XYZ this, this using a rank two monster you control with five or more materials and you transfer the materials to it. During your main, main phase specifically, you get to detach one material from this card. And if you do, negate the effects of all face up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. You cannot activate card, uh, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect activation if this card has a level one Pearly monster as material, which it very easily will do. When an, attack to, uh, when an attack is declared involving this card and that has five or more materials and 1500 damage to your opponent. Again, that is not a hard once per turn, so if this has the ability to attack multiple times, attack, burn, attack, burn, attack, burn. And then of course your main boss monster is two X Pearly Noir. You can end up with like double X Pearly Noir, but the idea is more times than not, you're probably gonna end up with one um, Noir and one Beauty, and that's gonna be a very defensive board. Plus you're gonna have your whole hand pretty much stacked, ready to go. So you can, only, uh, you can also XYZ this card by using a rank two monster you control with five or more materials, unless you're gonna be making rank sevens in this deck hard uh, with two level sevens, which is very, very doubtful. Uh, this card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects while it has five or more materials. You get to detach two materials from this card to target one card your opponent controls or in their graveyard and place it on the bottom of the deck. This is a quick event if it has a level one pearly monster as material, which again is what you're going to want to make sure you do. It's going to be the last one you want to detach. And the fact of the matter is, it's not a once per turn or even a hard once per turn to do that. So if this has loads of materials, you can constantly keep detaching, bouncing, detaching, bouncing. It's not even a once per chain. Um, but if you have this as a fat tower, as you're sitting there at a 2800 defense base, and then you're going to obviously have stuff like your um, 
delicious memory, giving it an additional 300 for every material. And you're obviously gonna to wanna to make sure that it has five or more materials so it's unaffected. So straight away it's getting buffed by like 1500. And if you have two of the uh, delicious memory, it'll be double stacked. And the idea is it's just incredibly hard and powerful monster to get past, unless they do hard open up a kaiju and then sad days a little bit. Uh, anyway, that is it for the Pearly Profile. I've never done one of these on the channel before, so I thought it'd be really kind of cool to show you a bit of a budget version for this deck. Yes, of course, cross out and everything right now might be a little bit high, but again, with the reprints of Rarity Collection 2, it should be relatively easy to pick up as you go through it. It is a very powerful deck. It's not my particular type of style of deck, but I do kind of understand where it comes from, and I do feel that the reprints will definitely make it slightly popular at stuff like nationals and maybe even higher events. So you do need to be aware of it when you are going to those events as we are leading into the competitive or the end of the competitive season. Um, so don't sleep on the deck. And if you wanted to build it and you still wanted to have a competitive way of playing without breaking the bank, this is definitely one of the decks that you can look into doing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.